Welcome back, Algebra Express. So today we're going over Marichek 2.5, uh, sol solving linear inequalities. inequalities. Um, and so this is the last section before your test. Uh, actually, we're going over 2.5 and 2.6. They combine them together. Um, and so this section is a lot of uh, learning about the notation of math, just like conventional notation. And again, this is just like a notational sort of thing. It's, it's not sort of like um, something that requires, I don't know, in-depth sort of reasoning, right? You just have to get used to the sort of system or structure that's already in place. And this is just something someone already put the structure in place for us. And so we're just using sort of like a previous structure that exists. And we're using their, the, the notation that they have, right? And so let's go over the notation. Um, so for, first thing they do is they, they try to differentiate, or they differentiate between strict inequalities and inclusive inequalities. And to look at that, I can literally draw. So if I want to do x is greater than a minus 2, I have my number line that looks like this. So I want the numbers that are greater than a minus two. Maybe something a little bigger. And so for my arrow, I want my arrow to go to the right of it. And the thing that I draw over the net negative two, you might notice it says strictly greater than. So we do not want the equals two on this one. So this is the one without the equal to. And so what I'm going to typically draw is going to be an open circle or an open point. What the book does in some po points, I think they only do this maybe once or twice. Um, they have these symbols. And so it's either a soft bracket or a hard bracket. And so if it doesn't include the point, they put a soft bracket. So it would look like a soft bracket and then they would put this with an arrow. Same graph, but now I want to do x is greater than or equal to minus 2. And a bit about this notation, you probably guess it, but this one's an open dot, this one is a solid dot, and we're going to the right, we're still going for the greater than. But this one includes the number, so we fill in the dot. That includes that that accounts for the equal to sign here. And then if we want the bracket sort of notation, it's a hard bracket, and we draw the arrow. And so let me try to get both of these on here just for a little bit of juxtaposition. So if it doesn't include the point, it's either an open dot or a soft uh, bracket. And if it includes the point, it's either a filled in solid point or a hard bracket. And so, um, I, I kind of skimmed over it, but if you need to like think about this, it's like this, you can look at this like a, like a Pac-Man or a mouth or something, right? Pac-Man's always gonna eat the bigger thing. And so if the X is larger than a minus two, then we're drawing to the right of a minus two. If it sa said less than, which would be this other one, we would draw it to the left. And so with that in mind, if we're looking at this thing, if this says x is less than 5, I know I'm doing something to that 5. 
So I'm doing something here. And then am I going to the left or right? And so I kind of phrased it right after asking that other thing. So I am going to the left of the number five. And then the next question I have to ask myself, is it a solid dot or an empty dot? And so if this is strictly less than, it should be empty. And I probably am not following the instructions they did. So I did an empty dot. I should probably have put parentheses on this thing. They're asking for parentheses on this one. Um, either way, I, I would accept it personally. Okay, so x is greater than or equal to minus two. So we're doing something with this minus two and we're going to the right of it. So then the question is, what am I doing at that minus two? Is it a solid dot, an open dot, hard parentheses, soft parentheses? So I think I'm gonna go with the parentheses on this one. It should look like a hard parentheses and uh, I don't know how to explain it, but like the parentheses always go in the direction of your arrow, right? So if I'm doing a right arrow, I need the sort of left parentheses to, to block this off. Just don't make it look like it has wings coming out of here or something, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> that would look a little odd. And now we come to something a little different. Okay. So maybe if you see something like this, maybe look at it in like the first piece. And so if we're looking at this first piece, this minus four is less than X. This is saying that X is greater than a minus four is another way we can look at that. And so the X should be larger than the minus four. And then if we look at this other piece, cover this up and just think about this piece, X has to be smaller than eight. And so this is telling me I want a line to the right of minus four, and I want a line to the left of eight, Ooh, including the eight. Let me put that sign on there. <clears throat> So how do I want to do this? Um, why not a minus four? What sort of bracket is that? That should be a soft bracket at the minus four. Let me do my other pin. So at a minus four, I want a soft bracket. And at the eight, I want a hard bracket. And what I want is this thing right in the middle? And so this this might maybe I should take it back to what is a solution? A solution is a number that when we plug it in, it will make the statement true. And so if we plug in any of these numbers that are between what minus four and eight, I guess I'm missing a little gap there maybe. Um, any of those numbers you can plug in and this will be true. So there is, there is another sort of way to look at this. And like I said, we can kind of look at these things in pieces. And if I have what minus four and I have what X is less than or equal to eight. Let me move this up a little bit so y'all can see it. Out a little bit. Uh, there we go. Okay. And so if we look at these things kind of separately, we want to make sure that minus four or x is greater than a minus four, and x is less than or equal to eight. And I said the word, but this is actually a sort of and statement happening here. 
we want to make sure that, that happens and that happens. So if we think about what these graphs look like, if x is greater than a minus 4, and this is hard for us to see, and it's going in this way all the way. And so if I'm using this and sort of thing, my solution, I'll put these things together. looks like the, the the sort of part if we look at this and we look at this it is what they have in common or it is what we call the intersection and so we can think about this if we think about the x quantities we can think about the x quantities with an and statement if we do this we're thinking about the intersection of the graph Ooh. and so we're thinking about an intersection and and an uh, interesting sort of tidbit, if you go in and study logic, the symbol for and looks like a little hat. When we use the symbol for an intersection, it is like an upside down sort of view. And so these, these concepts, they have kind of sort of correlate. If we're talking about like the element of a set, we use the and. We're talking about this at x and this x. Those are the elements or members. But if we're talking about like the set itself, these graphs represent the set, we're talking about the intersection of those two sets. And so if you talk about the intersection of the set or you start making and statements with the members of the set, it, the, the concepts correlate. And so and is gonna give you like a sort of intersection. And so that's, that's, that's actually what we're doing here when we bound the x between two numbers. We're making an and statement. We're demanding that it be greater than this thing and that it be less than that thing. So it has to meet both of those conditions. And when you make an and statement, it makes things more strict. You're putting more demands on things. Um, and so that's why our set is basically it's smaller, right? If we look at this set, it spans less numbers than this thing that shoots off to infinity, right? Okay. okay. And so we learned a little bit about, we learned a little bit notation. Um, We learned about doing the inequality uh, notation and we drew some graphs. And so in general, what I'm gonna say, if they ask you to convert to certain notations or convert between the notations, I would draw the graph, like always draw your graph. Um, for some reason, students just, you read the graph better. It's a bet, like it works, even if they don't ask for it, draw the graph. It works as a middle step. It gets you where you need to go. But also, did I mention you should draw a graph? Okay. And so if we start with the graph, if we want interval notation, it correlates exactly to the parentheses that we had. So if we have something like this, it's going to include both A and B. If we have something like this, it's not going to include A and B. Here, if we have something like this, it's going to include A, but not B. Here, it's not going to include A, but it's going to include B, right? And so we use interval notation, and we use interval notation to sort of talk about those graphs like we had on the previous page. So if we're going from minus four to eight, and I guess I could just throw it in there, we want the same parentheses that we had on our graph, and we just throw in the numbers from minus four to eight. And so now we're talking about all the numbers from minus four to eight. And I kind of talked briefly about it, but this is a solution for this thing. And previously we had solutions. Most of the time when we had a solution, we had one solution. And I might be kind of a weird question, but how many solutions are in here? We're actually talking about 
an infinite amount of solutions now, right? From minus four to eight, I can keep going and, and like sort of having things. There are infinitely many numbers between like even zero and one, if I wanted to do it, right? There are infinitely many fractions that I can spit out at you. It is a little more obvious here when things shoot off to infinity that we have infinity solutions, right? We're actually talking about an infinite amount of numbers that match this criteria right here. Okay. And so, <laughs> draw your graph, I think, is, is what I went on a big tangent before. Before I went on my big tangent, that's what I was saying. Draw your graph, and I think everything else follows. Soft parentheses become soft parentheses, hard parentheses stay hard parentheses. And with that in mind, let's look at this. This, I believe, is going from what? Minus 5 to 2. And so we go from minus 5 to 2. And now we just need to think about our parentheses. And so just copy them down the same way that they look over there, from minus 5 to 2. Okay. So this... Ooh, what does this do? So this starts, the, the leftmost, we're going left to right is another way to think about this. So the leftmost thing I see over there is a minus two with a soft parentheses. And now I wanna talk about this. Where is this going? And I kind of said, I did say it on the previous page. This thing is shooting off to infinity. And so for infinity, what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw this sideways looking eight thing. And so you draw your little sideways looking eight thing, that's infinity. And I'm, I, I'm gonna hunt down Buzz Lightyear because I don't know why he says it, but we never go beyond infinity. We can't even reach infinity. Infinity is not actually a number. It is a concept uh, of going incredibly high, right? Basically um, of getting incredibly large. Uh, <laughs> And so we can't actually reach infinity. And so anytime you see infinity, you better draw a soft bracket. If you draw a hard bracket, I'm gonna die a little bit inside each time. So please draw your soft bracket on, print, on the infinity. Um, and so this set is minus two to infinity and they are both soft brackets. This one because it's literally a soft bracket here and this one because it is infinity. All right, left to right, let's read the next one. We go all the way left. We keep going, we keep going. We're going off to infinity in this direction. So write your infinity. The other thing is this is not positive infinity. A lot of people miss this negative sign out here. It is shooting off to the negative side of infinity. And so it's going infinity in the negative direction. This same thing, we never include the infinity. So always has to be a soft bracket. So we're going all the way left and we're going right. We're going right until we hit the number four. And that hard bracket tells me I'm including it. Hard bracket and becomes a hard bracket. Stays a hard bracket. Okay. And now interval notation for this one. So we're going leftmost, minus four, we're going rightmost, three. And now we put our brackets, hard bracket, soft bracket, straight from the ground. Okay. So I think this last one is probably more straightforward than the previous two. Uh, so we threw in the concept of infinity in there. Now we're doing this thing. So we had one that looks like we're going in between the numbers. Now we got this thing that looks like we're going here and then we're going to skip over some numbers we're not going to include some numbers hmm. and so i want to think about this and there's actually two sets here if i look at this 
So if I look at this first set, just take it set by set, this is going left all the way. So that is the minus infinity thing happening there. <clears throat> it looks like a seedling starting there for some reason. I didn't draw that too smooth. But it is going left all the way. It is going up to a minus two with a soft parentheses. And so that is that left part of the graph over here. Now I want to draw or write out the right part of the graph in interval notation. So this is starting left at most two and what else? It's going right all the way to infinity. Okay, so what sort of things do I need in here to connect these? And so the thing I need in here is called a union. And so we, we draw the union with a big sort of U. And all that really means is that I'm piecing these things together. I'm combining these things. I'm adding this thing to this thing to make a larger set. Now, they don't ask us to do it. But I want to go through this because this is one of those kind of silly things. If we look at this, this is X being what? Less than, who? not equal to, just strictly less than minus two. And this thing is like X is being what? Oh, larger or equal to two. And I kind of said the word. It's like this, we want this part or we want this part. And so when we talk about sets, If we come together, that's unionizing, right? The alternative, if we talk about the members, we're going to use the word or. And the symbol, logical symbol for an or, is an upside down hat. And so these symbols look kind of similar. The way the and and the intersection look similar. Okay. <clears throat> and so I, I think this is pretty much it for this section. Like if you can convert between these three forms, if you can convert between a graph, between interval notation, and I hadn't really said what this is, but this is the beginning of set builder notation. So a lot of times you'll, you'll hear set builder notation. There's a few extra symbols we throw in there that look like this. And we throw the inequality or rule in here. So if I put in like X is what, greater than four, something like that. We're gonna use the inequality in our set builder notation. <clears throat> Uh, I don't think we actually go too into depth with this, and I think we pretty much just stick with the inequality. But if you see something like this, that's basically saying the same thing. They're just giving you the form the solution is in, and they're giving you a rule that it follows. <clears throat> and so let's start on this. Write the set as an inequality by first drawing the graph. So we want to draw the graph. If you want to use brackets, you can use brackets. Uh, hard and soft brackets. I think I'm just going to jump and I'm going to start using my uh, points. And so minus three. And the hard bracket tells me that is a solid point at a minus three. And I want to draw this thing. So minus three is the leftmost point. So we're going, this is the leftmost. We're going to keep going right off to infinity. So I'm starting at minus three. I'm including it and I'm going off to infinity in the right direction and so now i want the inequality from this thing and so if it's going off to the right this is a x is greater than sort of inequality since we include this endpoint it should be greater than or equal to 
And then the number I want is right here, the minus 3. And this last one, so minus infinity to zero. So this is the leftmost, so it's going left all the way. So I know it looks like something like it's got an arrow going off that way. It's going right as far as zero, and it's not going to include the zero. It's got a soft bracket there, and so it looks something like this and so we're looking at this inequality since it's going to the left this is everywhere where x is less than I don't want to include it so I don't put the equal sign but I put the number zero right there Okay, and let's see what we got next. Okay, so this is one sort of conceptual thing that might have to come in, in play, that we might have to go over. Um, So we want to talk about multiplying or dividing both sides by a negative when we have an inequality. And so if you think about the number line, it's got this weird sort of reflexive thing happening. I don't want to say this is like zero. And so the first statement I want to make is that A is less than B. And if I won't know that A is less than B, I want to say something about negative A and negative B. So I don't know what the inequality looks like with negative A and negative B. But I know like negative B, let's put negative B over here. And if I'm going along this line, I want to know where to put negative A. And so if, if I'm thinking about where to put negative A, well, it's obviously going over here on the negative side. So then is it going like right here? Or then I guess the question is, does it go over here? Well, we know this sort of like reflexive thing happening. If it if B is further out than A, then B has to be, negative B has to be further out than negative A. And so if <laughs> A is less than B, negative A is actually greater than negative b. And so there's this sort of thing, how did we get from like here to here? Well, if you multiply both sides by a negative, you also have to flip the sign, right? And so basically to get from a to negative a, you have to multiply by a negative. <clears throat> and to get from b to negative b, you have to multiply by a negative. And so we also have to flip the sign. And so again, like this sort of thing happens because our number line itself is a bit weird with this sort of symmetry thing happening, right? And anytime we go to the negative, it flips the, these sort of inequality properties, these greater than or less than things, right? Uh, okay, so this is a sort of rule and this is probably the primary sort of uh, like conceptual sort of thing that they want you to learn. I think most everything else and the section is is notation for, for the most part. This is a sort of conceptual weird thing that they're gonna sort of highlight here. And so we have minus five, x is less than 20. And so you're gonna solve these inequalities just like you will in, in equality. There's just a different sign there. But if it, if it makes it any better, pretend like that's an equal sign. And the first thing we have is like a minus five equals 20 or minus five X equals 20. Sorry, I don't think I said the variable. But if this is multiplying, uh, we wanna divide. So if we divide by a minus five, 
Anytime you multiply or divide by a negative, this is going to be a minus 4. Anytime you multiply or divide by a negative, always flip the sign. So anytime you multiply or divide by a negative, always flip the sign. And did you also know that anytime you multiply or divide by a negative, you should also flip the sign? Okay. I think that that's three times probably good enough for, for now. All right. I'll probably do it three more times, at least three more times. So let's do switching sides. Um, I, I'm not sure like even like, I don't, well, maybe I shouldn't speak too soon, but I don't think a whole lot of people have problems with this. Just like, remember your Pac-Man, maybe this Pac-Man's got a little Fu Manchu happening here or something. Um, and so the Pac-Man's eating the X. If you swap the signs, this, if you swap the sides that your X is on, I guess you also have to swap the signs, right? The Pac-Man still has to eat the X. Oh, okay. So we're going to solve these things just like there's an equal sign. So if this was an equal, we had this in the sort of last section uh, when we were solving equalities. If this has parentheses, like I'm hoping you're like itching at it. You're like, oh, it's got parentheses. It's got a number outside. I'm like hoping this is the first thought in your mind, right? Anytime you see those parentheses and you're solving something, well, not anytime, but most of the time, <laughs> you want to distribute. And so we do eight times one is going to give me eight. Eight times the minus X is going to give me minus eight X. And this is going to be greater than 72. So I want to solve this thing. I want to solve this thing for the X variable, get the X variable by itself. And so I see this minus eight X and then I see this eight out here. So I needed to get, do something with this eight. And so I need to subtract eight. And so 72 minus eight is going to give me what? 64. And so this is a minus 8x. And now I want to think about the sign. Do I need to do anything with the sign? So I've just subtracted a number. That guy should stay the same. And now I have negative 8x is greater than 64. And so I want to solve for x. And so this is being multiplied by negative 8. So I have to divide by a negative 8. And if I divide by a negative 8, this is going to become x. This is going to become a negative 8. And the sign, what am I going to do with the sign? So I'm hoping you're saying it, but we should also flip the sign. So this should look like what x is less than a negative 8. And so the first thing they ask is for interval notation. I would not do that first. I've kind of already said it. Always draw your graph, right? Whatever they give you, whichever notation they give you, always draw your graph. So I'm going to do my what, negative eight right in the middle, probably negative seven, negative six. I'm going to draw a few numbers. You don't have to be like, doesn't have to be the best graph, right? But like do something semi decent like this. Draw a few numbers on there. Let me know you at least know like how the number line looks a little bit. Uh, like try to evenly space it somewhat maybe. You know, it doesn't have to be perfection, but draw, draw it a little nice, right? Okay. Take a little pride in your work, I guess is what I should say. So X is less than a minus 8. Not equal to. So it's not equal to, so I'm going to draw my open circle around the minus 8. The line, since this is less than, is going to go to the left. 
So x is less than a minus 8. Looks like this graphically. If I'm doing my interval notation, I want to go left to right. Looking at my graph going left to right, this thing goes left all the way. And so in order to say that, that's like this is going off to infinity in the negative direction. So don't forget your infinity. Don't forget your negative. And then the only thing I should really put here, it fills itself out sort of, is a parentheses, soft parentheses. That's how far left it goes. How far right does it go? It goes to minus 8. Does it include the minus 8? No, it does not. So it gets soft parentheses. Okay. So we started off with, I'm going to call this the inequality, or I'm probably going to call this set builder, to be honest. And it's not complete set builder, but it's the basis of our set builder notation. And so we got the set builder notation. We have the graph that you should draw as the middleman, and then we have the interval notation. So uh, number five, we want to solve this thing. And so I see something like 3 halves p is greater than a minus 15 eighths. Okay. So if I see 3 halves p is greater than a minus 15 eighths, I want to get p by itself. So how do I do that? It's got a 3 halves being multiplied by it. There's a few ways I can do it. I can like multiply by two, divide by three, something like that. Or the way I really would like to do it personally is to multiply by this thing called the reciprocal. That's always going to give you one. So if I multiply by this reciprocal on that side, I've also got to multiply by my reciprocal on this side. And if I do that, those are going to give me one. That's just going to give me my P on that side. This side, I can do a little bit of simplifying. So this is going to give me one. This now is going to give me, I believe, four. I divide by two. Two by two gives me one. Eight by two gives me four. I divide by three. Three by three is going to give me one. Here, it's going to give me five. And so this gives me P. This gives me minus five fourths. And now I'm asking about the sign. So remember the rule. Anytime you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the sign. So they, this might be a point of confusion. Because you might be looking at this thing. This number right here is negative, right? But when we say when we multiply or divide by a negative, what we're talking about is the operation that we've done. So we look at this. This two-thirds we multiplied was positive, and so this thing remains. So we multiply by two-thirds. This number was positive. This does not change. So it doesn't matter that this thing was negative because the number we multiplied by was positive. And maybe you notice a sort of trend, but we're going to multiply or divide by a negative when the negative is attached to the variable usually, right? The negative here was not attached to the variable. It was a positive number. Um, and so that might be something that you might have might notice. Maybe not. It, it does take, you have to do a few of these before you start picking up patterns, right? Um, so P is greater than a minus 5 fourths. Okay, they gave us a fraction. Let the force be with you. Uh, minus three halves will be the next thing, minus six fourths. Uh, 
Minus seven fours. Please, no more horrible Star Wars puns. <clears throat> okay. Um, so, what am I doing here? I'm Mark. Here we go. I want to do P is greater than a minus five fourths. And so I did it without even saying it. If I get this inequality, I don't want to jump right into interval notation. I want to do my graph. So P is greater than a minus five fourths. We are not including the five fourths. I'm going to go ahead and throw a open circle around that guy, minus five fourths. And then I want to say this is P is greater than. So this takes everything to the right of P. Right of the number. So we're looking at everything to the right of that number. P is greater than a minus five fourths. So I go and try to fill in my interval notation. I want to go as leftmost as this thing is going. It is going as leftmost as minus five over four. Do I include this thing? I do not include this thing because it is open. I do not include it here, so I do a soft bracket. And the leftmost comma, the rightmost, it keeps going and going like the Energizer Bunny that we call that off to infinity. And infinity is always going to have a soft bracket. Okay. What is that? Number five. Ooh, just a few more, and we will be done. All right, number six. Three quarters minus X is greater than or equal to seven. Ooh, let me bring this down a little bit. So this is a student activity. Typically, I'd have the student group, group off and, and do these on their own. Um, so let's look, look at this problem. Three quarters minus X is greater than or equal to seven tenths. So what I see in here is that they have addition and subtraction and they have fractions. So I have a feeling I'm going to have to add and subtract fractions. Okay. So if I had to add and subtract fractions, I'm looking at what? Four and ten. Um, I guess I can go ahead and move some things away just to show you. If I want to get X by itself, I see this is addition subtraction. I'm going to end up subtracting three quarters from both sides. It is going to be the first step to solving this thing. And so this looks like a minus x on this side now. This is greater than or equal to 7 tenths minus three quarters. Now I'm looking at this thing. And so if I'm doing fractions and I'm adding and subtracting fractions, the way we add and subtract fractions is we have to find a common denominator. If I'm looking at four, if I'm thinking about four, I'm thinking about four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four. Uh, I'm like thinking about what twenty, twenty, thirty. 40. So when I'm thinking about multiples of 10, I'm hoping that makes it a little more obvious. I'm looking at things that end in either 0 or 5, and the first place that happens in the 4s is going to be 20. So we want to convert these things to a denominator of 20. 20 is our magic number. Let me go ahead and write LCD is 20. And get rid of this thing for a second. Okay. So I'm looking at this thing. How do I get from 10 to 20? In order to get from 10 to 20, I have to multiply this by 2. And so if I multiply the denominator by 2, I also have to multiply the numerator by 2. Similar thing here. From 4 to 20, I have to multiply by 5. Same thing here. So this thing, and I hope you don't drop it. Don't drop your negative sign out there. This is still a negative x. And this says negative x is what? Greater than or equal to. Now I'm doing the multiplication.
the, the multiplication up top. So 7 times 2 is 14. 2 times 10 gives me the 20. I'm subtracting. 5 times 3 gives me, what, 15. And 5 times 4 gives me 20. I am almost there. Now I'm looking at this, and I see a minus x is greater than or equal to. I do 14 minus 15 on top. That is going to give me a negative 1. And I'm going to keep that common denominator of 20 on the bottom. Now I have a negative x. And this is one of those things, if you really need to throw a co coefficient in there, I suppose you can. But that's just like a negative 1x happening there, right? And so this is like negative 1. If we want to make a negative 1 positive 1, I guess you can think about it multiplying by negative 1. You can think about it dividing by negative 1. I guess both of those are valid ways to think about it. I typically go with, let's multiply everything by a negative 1. So if we do that, this becomes a positive x now. This is a minus 1 over 20, and we're multiplying it by a negative 1. So the 1 is not going to change the 1 over 20, the number at all. The sign is two negatives should make this positive. So it should be positive 1 over 20 now. I am hoping everyone is like, hurry up, just yelling at the screen. Tell me what to do now. What should, what, what, what is the one thing I should be sure to do on this problem? I multiply by negative one. You should absolutely flip that thing. So this looks like X is less than or equal to one over 20. Whew. Okay. Uh... I guess we can do this on the graph. <laughs> this is what, 1 over 20, 0 over 20, 2 over 20 would be what, 1 tenth. Yeesh. <laughs> I'm not going to be too picky. Uh, so let's do this. Uh, my solution is this thing. Can I throw this all up on here? Just enough. So this is my solution on the bottom, and I'm going to kind of work my way up, right? I want to do my graph, and then I want to do my interval notation. So x is less than or equal to 1 20th. So I'm doing 1 20th, 0 20th, 2 20th is 1 tenth. So I'm also simplifying fractions. Maybe I wouldn't be that picky, if you're being honest. If you put 2 20th on a graph, I'm not going to count off for that. Um, so this says x is less than or equal to 120. So it does include the point. So if it includes this and includes the number, I'm going to solid dot it. Now I want to draw this thing to the left of 120. And then the last thing is interval notation. So I want to go all the way left. How far left does this thing go? It goes all the way left. So it goes all the way in minus infinity left. We never include the infinity. How far right does it go? It goes to 1 20th. And does it include that? It absolutely does make that a hard bracket. And so this is three different ways to say the same thing, basically. Yeesh, I did that all wrong, didn't I? I got my numbers backwards. Sorry. Ah, this is why. Check your problems. This should be zero and this should be one ten. Got those numbers on my number line backwards. I got used to doing negative numbers. And they were going backwards in my head. Sorry. That previous problem, I believe, had fractions and negative numbers.
developed a bias there, I guess. Uh, one, two, three. What was this? Number four. Okay, here we go. Page four. Okay. Uh, and we've got two more problems after this. So let's do this. Uh, I don't... Okay. If I'm being honest, I don't feel like this is very substantially different from the equality word problems we had. Um, one of the major differences is we're just going to throw in an inequality sign. So if you understood those word problems with the equalities, uh, this is just basically they're going to add another little detail to it. So let's look at it. Letitia has been offered a job. Uh, the company offered her 48K per year plus 3.5% of the total sales. Set up and solve an inequality to determine what total sales she will need to have in order to make at least 62,000. And if I'm being honest, I you could absolutely do this one with just equalities. And it would probably work out and you could probably figure it out. But let's think about this. If she doesn't sell anything, what's the sort of like down payment? What's the sort of amount that she's going to get regardless of if she sells anything? That amount is the 48K. So she's making at least that amount. And that's a flat amount. It's not going to have a variable on it, right? Is what I mean by that. And this, I'm going to convert this. So I'm going to move this two decimal places. So if I go 3.5 and I move it two decimal places, I ooh, I need to fill in like a zero there. And so if I do this, this is 0.035 is 3.5%. And so she's going to get 3.5% of the total sales. And I'm not even following the instructions that I told you last time. What total sales will she need to make, right, is the question. And so if we want to set up a variable, usually, almost always, we're going to set up the variable to be the thing that we don't know. So X is the total sales in dollars. And so my variable is the total sales in dollars. She's making 48K plus 3.5% of the total sales. And so now we're just converting the math to English sort of thing. So 0.035% looks like this. Of the sales looks like of X means multiplied by X or the total sales. And we want to determine what she will have to sell in order to make at least 62,000. So I need some sort of sign. I need some sort of sign here, but I know the number I want is 62,000. And so I guess the question is, what sign do I put there? Should it be greater than or should it be less than? Well, this is going to calculate how much she makes. And we want how much she makes to be at least this. So if it's at least this, then this amount has to be greater than that amount. And if you set things up right, wrong and you flip that sign accidentally, I think by the time you got to your solution, you would realize something's wrong, right? Just in the context of this problem, I think like putting an inequality in here, they're, they're, they're trying, I'm, I don't want to speak too much, but I think they're just like trying to give you a word problem to throw an inequality in there, right? You could technically do this with an with an equality, like equally as equally as well, I think. And and with with, with the context of the problem, you can just figure out kind of like, oh well, she's got to sell at least that amount, right? Um, and so let's go ahead and solve this. I think I'm just speaking a little too much on this now. 
if I'm going to solve this, I have to what? Subtract 48K from both sides, I believe. We're solving for this X right here. So if we look at this X, it's being multiplied and then out further, it's being added. <clears throat> We're going to subtract the 48K. If we do that, I got in my notes more. What is that, 14? <clears throat> that side gives us 14. This side still gives me 0 0.035, and I'm multiplying by X. I got to divide what both sides by this 0 0.035. So this is X. I'm dividing by 0 0.035. I'm dividing by 0 0.035. So this is my X. This number is going to give me 400,000 now. And then I guess now I gotta ask, uh, multiplied and divided by something, do I flip the sign? I do not flip the sign. I keep the sign the same. I multiplied by a positive number. And hopefully that makes sense in the end. Cause they asked you a question. And they asked you a question in English, so we should probably write them something as a response in English. So what total shells, the she shells, she shells. Okay, okay, anyway. What total cells she will need uh, to have in order to make at least 62K, right? And so how many cells will she need? So probably say something with at least 400, thousand dollars in cells. Typically, if they're asking you a problem in English, typically they want you to give them a answer in English, right? Just like kind of imagine it was your boss and he asked you how much, <laughs> how much do you need to make at least 62K in cells? And you answer your boss, X is greater than 400K. And it's like, your boss is going to look at you with like probably the worst look ever and just be like, why did I hire this person? Right. Answer them in English. Right. And differentiate your C's and cheese from your shells and cells. Okay. Unique New York, unique New York. Okay. Okay, so we got two more to go. I think we can get through them. Oh man, so now what are they doing? Whew. We did some solving with one inequality. Now they're setting it up with two inequalities. <clears throat> okay, so if it confuses you, you could like maybe separate these solve them separately. I don't want to do that personally. I think it's probably more to cause more confusion so let's get have at this if i looked at th just this and i wanted to solve just this i think like it, throw an equal sign in there if it messes you up with an inequality but 3x minus 1 equals a minus 7 the first thing you would do this is look at that 3 times x look further out at that minus 1 we want to attack that minus 1 we want to attack that minus 1 by adding 1 and so this is this is just like an equality with like three sides. If I do it to this side, I also have to do it to this side, and I also have to do it to this side. So now there's three sides I'm dealing with instead of two. We just made one more side, that's all we did. Minus seven plus one is going to give me a minus six. I just added, so I'm not going to switch my signs at all. This is in, in the middle is going to be three X, 11 plus 1 is going to give me 12. And now I see 3x. I want to get x by itself. I want to divide by 3 each side. Negative 6 divided by 3 gives me minus 2. This divided by 3 is going to give me x. This divided by 3 is going to give me 4. This was a strict inequality. 
we're not going to include these points, <clears throat> but we have seen something that looks similar to this before. This is like when X is bound between two numbers. This is like that and statement. It is greater than the negative two and it is less than four. And so I know we want negative two and I know we want four. Uh, maybe doing that rule by twos. I know these are the numbers I want. I know on minus two, it is a circle. Open. And on four is an open circle. They are strict inequalities. They are open circles. Whew, I did, <laughs> did my graph on our wrong thing. Sorry. I guess I'm swapping these around. I'm going to do my interval on my graph and my graph on my interval. But let's do it. We're going for it. If I want to go from... <laughs> Minus two to four. I draw my open circles and I draw a line between those open circles. If I want to do the interval notation, I know I'm going from two to four, minus two to four. And then I want to know what sort of parentheses I put on these things. Well, they are open circles, they are now parentheses. Sorry about swapping that, but it still worked. There was still a line there. A line is a line. We can draw our own arrows. It'll be okay. Okay, so if we have a three-sided inequality and the X is in between, it looks like two dots with the line in between it. The, here, the dots were open because these were strict inequalities. And then we go left to right. So the left most it went was minus two. The right most it went was four. It did not include either one of those, and so that was our interval. Uh huh. So we have this thing now three sided inequality. So we're looking at this, we see two, we see five. Okay, so I, I don't want to deal with fractions. So if I don't want to deal with fractions, What's the first thing I'm going to have to find? So I'm going to have to find an LCD. And between 2 and 5, I'm looking at the first even number that comes out of the 5. It is 10. So my LCD is going to be 10. So what do I do if I... You can, you can convert everything to, to a fraction over 10 and then get rid of the 10. That is something people do. Um, I think that's a few extra steps. Is, sometimes it might be easier, but in general, I, I like to just multiply and get rid of the fraction off the get-go. So let's multiply, get rid of the fraction. Um, so minus a half. And let me do it in red so we can kind of see. So I want to do minus a half. I want to multiply this thing by 10. I'm just going to probably go ahead and do it. I'm going to do 10 over 1. Uh, I want this less than or equal to. I want to do another multiply by 10. To the middle part. And this is less than what? 1 half. And I want to multiply by 10. So I'm getting rid of the fraction. In order to get rid of the fraction, i got to find the LCD. The LCD is 10. So this is my LCD. I multiply everything by the LCD. Three different sides, got to get the multiply by 10. So you should see this multiply by 10, three different places. I'm going to multiply 10 by a half. I guess I could probably do this with the whole number. You could do some cross simplifying. But 10 times a half, or halving 10, that should give you 5. This negative is making it negative. Ooh, now this might take a little bit of work, huh? If we look here, okay, we can't really do much. If we look here, five and 10, this is going to be one. This is going to be like a two now. Now I want you to look at this. 
what do you see here? Because if you do this, I'm going to die inside just a little bit, just a little bit more. Please don't do this. We almost always, if you see a numerator, look at this numerator as its own thing, right? You got to put some parentheses around here because if you don't put parentheses, what are you bound to do? So you're most likely not going to multiply this thing over here, right? We're not going to end up doing distribution and this guy's going to feel awfully lonely that he's not getting his two. So don't do that. And this is all less than a half of 10, which is five. So put parentheses, always put parentheses around everything. I don't, we really love to put parentheses around things as mathematicians. And <laughs> you will see in the next lesson that it's not always uh, such a great idea. We should have probably picked a few more symbols somewhere along the way, but we didn't and we're going with it. Too late to turn back. <laughs> Keep, keep keep full steam ahead. Uh, so let's keep going. So minus five is less than or equal to. We want to do some distributions. As long as much as I talked about this, I hope you're doing it. Two times three is giving me six. Two times a minus x is going to give me minus two x. And I am less than five. Now I'm here. Uh, I'm looking at this. And I see six minus two x. I want to get that x all by itself. Okay, to get the x all by itself, I have to get, well, it's multiplied here, and then we got addition subtraction out here. I have to subtract that 6 from each side. So minus 5 minus 6 is going to give me minus 11. This is less than or equal to 6 minus 6. I got no more constants there, but I still have a minus 2x in the middle. And this is less than, ooh, strictly less than, don't put your equal sign where it don't go. Five minus six is a minus one. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> you ever notice when people try to correct you, sometimes it's this exact thing that they're doing wrong. It's not necessarily the thing that you're doing wrong. Okay. Yeah, so don't put your equal sign on here. It's strictly, this one is a strict inequality. This is the inclusive inequality, right? Who, and I said it, this should have a minus 2x. Oh, just a second. <clears throat> okay. And so now we're, we have something that looks like this. Minus 11 is less than or equal to minus 2x is less than minus 1. So we want to get x by itself. So each side, we want to divide by the thing that is on the x. The thing that is on the x is a minus 2. We want to divide each side by a minus 2. So if I divide this side by a minus two, I have 11 divided by two. They're both negative. If they are both negative, when we divide them, that becomes positive. This becomes x. This becomes positive one half. Okay. Now, why am I taking so long to finish this? What is the sign? What's going to happen to this sign? We have an inequality. Guess what we just did? We multiplied into, or we divided by a negative number. So we divide by a negative number, and you want to be careful because this sign flips here. So this sign stays the inclusive. This sign flips here. It stays strict. I was like uninclusive. No, strict. Okay. This one stays strict. This one stays inclusive.
if you get here, you have done a fantastic job. You have done most of the work. And, and being honest, if you got here, I would give you most likely, yeah, no, not not most likely. I would definitely give you like full credit. There's 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 one little thing that makes this a little bit prettier. We don't typically write things in descending order like this. This is going from highest to least, right? We typically want to go least to greatest. So we typically want to start here at one half. This sign is the strict inequality. This sign is the X. This is the inclusive inequality with the 11 halves. So you typically want to flip these things around from least to greatest. And if you flip things around from least to greatest, it might help you later. Um, because what we're going to do is graph an interval notation now. And so if we do the graph. Was this a half? One? Oh, that's that a horrible spacing, man. Uh, yeesh, 11 halves. Where is that? Was it close to between five and six? <laughs> okay. So my, my spacing is really horrible, but I have a graph of, of sorts here. And so I want to go and I want to think about this. I have my one half and I have my 11 halves. This one should be a open circle. This one should be a closed circle and I should fill in everything in, in between. Okay. And so I have my set builder or inequality. I have my graph. And the last thing I want to do is interval notation. So if I do this interval notation, this thing is going as leftmost as one half. The bracket that I put on there should be a soft bracket. I put my comma. It's going right all the way to 11 halves. And I put my solid bracket, including that endpoint. And so here we go. Three different ways to say the same thing again, right? All right. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, wish you luck on your test. Study hard. Look at that review. Um, come to the review. Practice. Uh, and I think y'all will do all right. At least you'll, you'll, you'll absorb something, I think. All right. Thank you.